how do you grow on YouTube? The only answer I can really give <laughs> the, is like spend 14 question. years. <laughs> yeah, spend 14 years making a mod for a game that uh, really that covered for me being terrible. Started getting support again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the it, it's not a reliable <laughs> path to follow. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm going to unmute myself so you can actually hear this. What's good, YouTube? It's Jay here. And today we are here with Corey, the godfather, the creator of one of the most, the, the most known Empire War mod in Empire War history, Thrawn's Revenge. Like I said, he's the godfather. He's the creator. He's been around here for a long time. And uh, Corey, how you doing, man? I'm not bad. Uh, you? I'm doing pretty good. So yeah, I, I I recently came up with this um this awkward little podcast slash video that I wanted to make with Corey. I wanted to get to know him a little bit better. I've heard a lot about him, but I've never personally spoken with him directly. And um this whole video is just gonna be my way of getting to know him and hopefully you all learn a little bit more about him yourself. Um so yeah, Corey, um you've already introduced yourself and I've always wanted to know like where where did you start with all of this? Let, let me just get a little bit of a background story about you, Star Wars, modding. Let me just get some information on that, dude. I've always wanted to know. So my I got started with Star Wars sometime around when Attack of the Clones came out. Like my cousin had uh had Phantom Menace on uh on VHS, which is an old blocky thing that you used to put into a machine and you could see <laughs> movies on your TV. Uh <laughs> And up till then, I had no idea really about anything in Star Wars. I knew what a lightsaber was, but it was, I thought like uh, Luke was Anakin's father. I had no idea that Anakin was Darth Vader. So I went to this movie completely <laughs> blind and thought it was just going to be something that me and my cousin would make fun of. But then it was like, actually pretty yeah. surprising and then i watched really the good. rest yeah so episode one for all the hate it gets got me into star wars so i i can't be too mean to the i, I can't agree with the prequel hate i guess would let, be let it be known now. let it be known one of the most renowned people in this community started with star wars episode of one from from everything let it let it be known that's how that's yeah. the origin story we're going with <laughs> pod racing like lightsaber battles qui-gon it was all it was all great yeah, uh, the, the prequel hate I've never really completely understood. I, I kind of get the, um, the the sequel hate. I'm not really gonna go go into that one a little bit, but um, <clears throat> the prequel the prequels have always been good movies to me. Attack of the Clones is a little hit or miss, but the, the prequels have always been really good to me. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it just kind of comes down to what they came in with and what their expectations are based on that. Because like a lot of people would have been giving the prequel hate would have been older coming into it and already experienced the original trilogy, but then. Uh, kids coming in then the stuff that seems silly to everyone else is going to be kind of right up their alley and same thing with the ewoks in episode six where that was seen as kind of childish but kind of cheesy you know kids movies so yeah, exactly yeah you gotta you gotta love the star wars boomers man they can never really if, if there's even an ounce of cutesy in it they oh, they just they jump on it they hate it with, with the yeah. quickness um but yeah, so I mean, all right, so that's how you started with Star Wars. How did you start with getting into like the whole like modding bit of everything, like with like Empire War mm. and whatnot? So I think it was uh, Battlefront 2 that had the Empire War trailer on the game. It was. was that that or yes. It was. Okay. I'm never sure if it's that or Episode 3's DVD that had it, but I don't think the timeline would even work I out on that. I know exactly what trailer you're talking about, where it just shows Stormtroopers yeah. just going flying from like getting hit by bombing runs and a bunch of stuff. I know yeah, exactly like what the, you're talking about. The landing your forces, it shows like the ground battle already happening and the the yeah. transport, yeah. the Gallifrey transports coming down. Those cinematics and, we never actually got in the game. <laughs> yeah. I think it was like it was supposed to be the Frasia mission where you capture the the X Wings. You get the yeah. X Wing design. I think that's what the trailer was was based on. But like a lot clearly got cut from the game as they went through development, and there's yeah. still remnants of it in the code. But uh, yeah, like I had a terrible family computer, so it was like running Windows ninety eight. Oh and God! <laughs> it, yeah, so I was watching that trailer, thing. I I'm never going to have a computer that can run this, but it looks awesome. So I started finding uh, forums about it because I used to be really active on the. GameSpot forums. And I started mm -hmm. finding some mods like uh, Legacy of War and Imperial Assault, which were two of the original big mods that were announced before the game had even come out and just started posting on those forums. Had no idea what a mod was, really. <laughs> so when the game released, it was like, okay, we're 
game's out. Where are these mods? And I got very confused by the fact that they weren't all immediately available with all this content that they were showing. So like, how old were you, would you say you were probably were around this time? Like when you just really got, kind of got all, into all of this? If you I, don't think, mind I would have been about 13 at that point. Okay. When I first started getting into or figuring out modding. So like, it, it's weird now that there are people who are like playing the games and the mods and active on community areas that are younger than the game. Yeah, because uh, Empire War is what, 15 years old now at this point? Yeah. Which is just kind of kind of mind blowing to me. That, yeah, I would have been ten, I think, when that game came out back in uh, two thousand six. Oh god, yeah. I'm getting old. A few months ago, it was. <laughs> I've been modding the game now for <laughs> longer than I haven't been. Like more than half my life has been spent with Empire at War. <laughs> so but you developed a really nice career out of it. I gotta. I'm gonna assume you've had a lot of fun in the process. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the time, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stress there too. Yeah, we when we have um people that have a lot of expectations out of you, and then a lot of like you know critics here and there. I bet it could be a little nerve wracking from time to time. But either way, you've you've done a lot of things that a lot of people probably wish they would they would have stuck with. You know, like mm -hmm. if they stuck with modding, really. Yeah, and all all it costs is 15 years of your life. So, <laughs> but can you see it's all worth it. Could you have seen yourself do it really doing any other like kind of like would you call it like a career path or is it more still just like kind of a hobby kind of thing with with, with a mix of yeah, a career? It, it's definitely still a hobby. Like my career now is YouTube stuff, and there was a lot of things that kind of came together and worked together for that. But uh, the modding, I still have to make sure that I put the same kind of time aside for it that I did when I was working any other job. And there were so many points where it was like, okay, this is the last release and I'm going to go and do something else. But uh, then when I started doing YouTube, and didn't really have many other options uh, from some other circumstances that it turned into more like, oh, I'm, I have this time to work on the mods and this is a job that I can do from home. Like YouTube is a job that I can do from home. And even if they didn't start off making any money from YouTube, but it was like enough because I was in like 2016 i ended up or 2017 i ended up moving back with my parents because my mom was diagnosed with cancer so Ooh, I'm someone sorry needed to, to sit in or someone needed to kind of be around and make sure she was good while my dad was uh able to go work so if i was able to make like a couple bucks doing youtube videos then i could do that from their house uh so i ended up just kind of doing that which meant i had more time for modding so I had, up until that point, I kept for like 10 years been thinking like, oh, this release, then we're done. This release, then we're done. But after that, it was, I can uh, make plans for years. And hopefully if I'm still <laughs> doing YouTube, then I'll at least be giving myself something to play on YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. Well, for one, um, I, like I said, there's a lot of information about you I didn't know. So I'm sorry about like that had to be the circumstance that really kind of put you, you know, on yeah. this plane. I'm sorry that had to be the yeah, particular thanks. circumstance, but I mean, um, you definitely have been doing some great stuff with your YouTube career. I do watch a lot of your stuff from time to time when I have free moments. Um, and I really do appreciate the stuff and the content that you really push out. And again, for all the hard work that you do, like I said, in light of those kind of circumstances, man, that's that's one heck of an achievement, really. Like everything yeah. that you've done so far. That's really impressive. I appreciate that. Yeah, not a problem. I mean, um, because there are a lot of people who in those kind of situations will probably quit to, you know, in the for the sake of trying to deal with that particular situation. But, you know, for you to push kind of through all of that and, you know, really make it something successful, you know, network, meet the right people and just keep kind of going like that's that's really impressive. Yeah, like it, it was a situation where like I was lucky enough to have the fan base of the mods that was willing to support that kind of thing and had the other factor of like not really having any options there yeah because uh, there was nothing nearby to get a job at when i was staying with them so it was just it's like it was either do, do that or <laughs> yeah. yeah it was try to make that work or <laughs> nothing else really could have worked and those are usually the greatest kind of origin stories when you think back to a lot of uh, famous actors musicians etc you know they, they usually use their hobbies or their career their um their personal interests like a last resort and then they exploded and became famous because yeah. uh they just never gave up you know um yeah. and uh, you're not kidding about the fanatical 
um, supporters of like the Thrawn's Revenge community. I've had a lot of them in comment section of my YouTube videos. They're very loyal. So, you know, shout out to them for really sticking by your side, yeah. honestly. Like, that's really cool. For sure. Yeah, it, like, I'm still a relatively small channel, but the fact that there is such a dedicated following for like all these different projects really makes it a lot more feasible than from coming from another direction. Oh, like, yeah. I would have no idea where to start coming into any kind of content creation without having that background. So yeah. like anytime I get questions of like, Oh, how do you, how do you grow on YouTube? The only answer I can really give <laughs> the, is like spend 14 question. years. Yeah. <laughs> spend 14 years making a mod for a game that uh, really the covered for me being terrible. Started getting support again. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not a reliable path to follow. <laughs> But hey, it, it might work out. Don't don't give up. You know, hey, it, it might work out. <laughs> I don't know what game to point to now. Like maybe if people start doing Homeworld Remastered mods right now, they can like squeak by into a YouTube career from that. Dude, all you've got to do is really just hop on the trends, you know, make some um, Call of Duty Warzone content, you know, make all yeah. these thumbnails with a bunch of arrows and the, the guns all saturated and stuff. Uh, I'm telling you, it's 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 easy money. But you no, know, in all seriousness, um. You said Homeworld, Homeworld 2 mods? Are they actually becoming popular again? I'm, I'm out of the loop. I, I just don't know what's going to be big enough to, by the time a mod's big enough in the community, to turn into a YouTube channel for it. Because, like, 2007, I wouldn't have really guessed that uh, Empire at War <laughs> YouTube Let's Plays would have been as big as they were. Like, someone like yeah. Shaq that gets to a channel his size largely through, or, like, with Empire at War being one of the driving factors there. yeah. You know, I think if the Star Wars community wasn't as big and as powerful as it could be, I think that those kind of careers would probably be a little bit harder too. So it's like yeah, having it, sure. having the knowledge that you've got a lot of um, you know, you got you have a lot of old heads in the Star Wars community, and strategy games usually favor people um, in most cases of, of uh, I want to say of an older generation, at least from my knowledge, you know. So it's kind of nice that you've got so many Star Wars fans on top of the fact that it's a game that really could probably um appeal to those kind of fans it, 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 there's so much that's just falling in line magically yeah. and it, it just kind of works out so i don't know if you found this but like the best way to get interaction with a video which is what youtube really wants is like just play poorly for an episode or two and like there'll be 10 people in the comments like oh you should have done this thing and then it's like ah free interactions it's funny that's you like say that. 40 chess youtube's it's so funny that you say that I can have um I, I can have a video uh, where I did where I do absolutely everything flawlessly. And then I've still got somebody in the comments say, like, you should have done this. Yeah. But, I but if you do it did... so flagrantly wrong that everyone realizes <laughs> what you've done wrong, then you've got 30 people commenting. YouTube's going to oh, people love this video. And then they put it out more. Put you a typo what? in the title. And then it's like, oh, you spelled this wrong. Free interaction. <laughs> I'm gonna, you know what? That's I'll, I'll keep that in mind. In my next Thrones of End video, I'm just gonna let every single <laughs> hero I have die, and then um, let the hate come forth. Yeah, like the, I, I said, I had no good tips for YouTube, but there you go. Red arrows, <laughs> just, typos, bad gameplay. We're we're putting on a clinic here for everyone who wants to grow. <laughs> just suck at the game; it, it'll work yeah. out. People, people love terrible people. Oh man, get a hero <laughs> killed. It's the end of the, end of the world. <laughs> See, see, that's why I started. Um, I started doing like like cinematic intros for a lot of my videos. I actually like write intro scripts and everything for all my intros. I like, I like storytelling. You know, I like being involved mm -hmm. within the universe and stuff. So, um, in one of my in one of my uh early episodes of the playthrough, I rarely ever let a Thrawn's Revenge hero die. I, 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 I'm so against letting heroes die in any mod where they can die. Like, I will mm -hmm. do everything I can to protect them. Um. I let Cien Solve die by accident um, early in one of my campaigns, and I just wrote it off in the um, cinematic intro, like, "Oh, he's just um, he's he's on shore leave. He was just badly injured, so he's he's being placed somewhere else in the Republic hierarchy." You know, we're, we're just gonna leave it at that. I don't know if you've ever played uh, Fire Emblem. When you have heard important of hero deaths on, then some of them that are important for the story, instead of like being actually dead, they'll still pop up in cinematics. They're like, <laughs> "Oh, I'm too hurt to fight, but let me say this plot relevant point for you." That kind of thing. <laughs> See that? That's exactly how I feel. I'm such a, I'm such a, I'm such a lore head when it comes to dealing with, uh, especially for the New Republic. When it comes to dealing with heroes, I will literally write them off as just they, they probably just can't walk or something anymore. They're, yeah. they're still there. They just can't walk anymore. <laughs> we do kind of do that for some stuff where it's like. Uh, the chief of state elections for the new republic uh because you can elect whoever you're to give a different bonus and right you can still do that with leia and mon mothma if their heroes die so they're kind of like the off-screen injured versions of themselves at that point <laughs> the so cripple versions it's, it's of a, yeah <laughs> but, they, but they but it works in that case especially that it really it really does work out um 
for the senators and stuff. Uh, when they're I play, blown up, they're still good. I gotta admit, I'm scared to play Fall of the Republic. I think it's a great mod, but when I see the number of heroes, I'm just like, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna have a <laughs> panic attack trying to save everybody right now. Just pile them up in the back corner, and then eventually you'll come <laughs> around to using using them I'll once just, or twice. I'll just stick them all on Kessel and just just leave them for the rest of, <laughs> for the rest of their lives. <laughs> but, Until Kessel um, gets attacked. Don't don't get started on Kessel. Every time I started every time I started a new Republic playthrough, my first immediate thought is let me capture Kessel. Let me immediately capture <laughs> Kessel every single time. It's that long ended. trade rope from Mon Calamari. It's difficult to reinforce. You know what? I actually recently just started um an Empire Empire's um Essence big Galactic 140 Planet Galactic Conquest, I think, right. with um without the uh, Empire of the Hand. Um, I was so used to playing um, Art of War and Essence of War and stuff that now that I'm playing this bigger map, having all these direct routes to Mon Calamari and um, mm -hmm. Bothawui and Hast, even like the corporate sector even is attacking me right now. Uh, I'm, I'm not used to all this. <laughs> yeah. I, I've actually had to put way more effort in actually like defending Mon Calamari and stuff. Like, I, actually, I actually just killed Zinj on Mon Calamari. Um, mm -hmm just by iron cannon spamming him to death but i'm, I'm yeah. not used to that. i'm not used to the aggression it was scary <laughs> the the corporate sector can be a weird one and the penistar alignment and empire of the hand work a bit like this as well where the way their ai is quoted is coded uh they're told to not be aggressive until a certain points for the csa not at all but that's different if it's the player that's next to next to them so if you are playing new republic then the csa basically only has one target that it's allowed to focus on so it can result in some pretty big attacks from them. Uh, okay. Otherwise, you end up with like the CSA taking over like the entire northern section of the galaxy, which would probably happen very often because they're back in a corner, a lot of easy defensible positions for them. Yeah. And then that would be probably pretty weird for people. You know, have you ever played Stellaris? Yeah. Okay, so you know how you've got like um, fallen empires that can just awaken, pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> that happened with the Penistar alignment recently. For me. Yeah, I, I made it all the way up to the Dark Empire era. The Penistar alignment does nothing but attack Generis. So I finally say, okay, I'll give you Generis. I wait about forty weeks, and they do, they do nothing. Soon as we make it to Dark Empire, they just immediately yeah. swarm the galaxy out, out of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> it's era three that they're uh, that they're so a lot of the factions have these personalities where like. The Ariado Authority, they're specifically coded to attack with fewer units than they should, so that they, <laughs> one, don't kill off the New Republic, and two, kind of reflect how stupid Duff Artist was in a lot of his stuff in canon. So they're a little bit of a, an easier early game opponent. But with the Penistar alignment, we do tell them to kind of stay put more until Era 3, and that means that they aren't going to be as big of a threat early but it also means by the time they start attacking they're pretty built up yeah yeah so, and i guess that really does reflect their that really does reflect like you said their in lore like description because they really yeah. didn't do anything until uh palpatine actually came back yeah so it kind of it kind of really makes sense now and I, I just love the way it's all really worked out because now i really feel like the empire is kind of united in my current playthrough and yeah. it just feels like everything's just kind of happening at once I, I like the way that that's all working out we do want to put in a few ways to have like the empire kind of reintegrate. Uh, so like we're working on all the government mechanics for different factions, like the elections for the new Republic yeah. for the empire. There's going to be elements of like being able to pull all the Imperial factions together. Uh, so like each faction is going to have a certain amount of legitimacy. And then based on certain events, you'll either get different heroes or build options or uh, when certain size criteria are met, pull in the last little dregs of, some of the imperial forces so the empire itself is the more likely one to survive into era five because they are in kind of a tough position for the ai being in the middle of the galaxy yeah i do yeah. get kind of chipped away at sometimes so so it's kind of like with the uh, fall of the republic like how um certain factions are separate until you kind of unite with mm -hmm. them and then they they bring whatever they have to you yeah okay okay i've always liked that mechanic because it, it allows for a little bit more like dynamic gameplay you don't always have mm -hmm. to just rush for this corner of the galaxy you can just play it through a different mechanic and just get get the materials through that versus having to save up credits and spam spamming left click and build up enough and yeah whatnot i've always liked that system it's a really well thought out system we actually came up with it pretty late into the development of the first version because one of the things that i do like about tr is how you do typically start smaller and then you have the whole galaxy to build up into when you have equal forces then it's a bit more difficult to not just win immediately. So we were looking for a way to kind of get a bit of that 
because like this, the Clone Wars are fundamentally large power versus large power. But when you have player versus AI in that situation, unless you're giving them a lot of free stuff later, then it can just be like win one battle and then you're kind of at the point that you'd usually consider yourself to have won. So with the sector forces for the Republic and the sub-factions for the CIS, uh, we figured we could break up the forces just enough so that the enemy faction has enough that they can the AI can take early without making the player feel like they're losing out too much and still have that sense of progression. So a lot we still want to do to flesh it out, but I think it kind of accomplishes its purpose pretty well right now. Yeah, man, I, I got to admit, it's one of the more unique or galactic like, systems that I've ever played in a mod. So, I mean, I think it, I think it works phenomenally so far. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And speaking of compliments, I've always wanted to know, um, what's the weirdest form of criticism that you think you've ever gotten while... Uh, um, and I'm not talking from um, other modders per se, but from like a like a hardcore dedicated fan. What is the weirdest piece of criticism you think? Oh, that's a good question. Um, <laughs> if you got more than one, that's perfectly fine. But uh, yeah. the one that always kind of gets me is there will be people who uh, it kind of brings in stuff from the YouTube side, where there will be people who either say like, "Oh, we're I'm holding back mod content for." uh to just play it and if i'm doing a preview on my channel then I, I should just be able to release it for everyone uh or the idea that like we balance certain factions around uh let's players preferences so like we make fall the republic some uh super op republic thing because we know let's players want to play just republic stuff and the weirdest part of that for me was that I was getting all those comments on a CIS Let's Play that I was doing. So it's like, <laughs> at, at that point, I can say, like, I like this. I, I'm going to play as the CIS. I'm doing a Let's Play as the CIS. But, like, if they're commenting on that video with that, well, I don't know what else I can do with that. <laughs> oh, I love the comment. Um, you're holding back modding content as if you're not you know the biggest tester for the mod like all the stuff yeah. that you do you record and inherently is a form of testing so it's yeah not ready to go because you're really focusing on trying to make sure it's you're ready it's ready you're making god yeah. it testing everything like any of those oh, preview man. playthroughs are just like kind of walking a tightrope of trying not to get too far into any broken weeds like some of the playthroughs i do are just inundated with bugs and kind of shows that side of development as well some go a lot more smoothly but there's definitely a mix of stuff that we just not ready for people to play with yet. <laughs> no, dude, there's there's an underlying under, there's an undertone to it all, man. You're just holding it back. Come on, you're, yeah, you're, no, just, you're, I, just, you're just gatekeeping. We've actually got like six <laughs> years of releases just banked already, and I just want YouTube content. So, <laughs> everyone else, I guess. The Vonger are already ready to go. You've got the Swarmer all ready to go. No, at this point, we're in the Legacy of the Force series. You know, we've got the Second Galactic Civil War going on at this point. I mean, we actually do have a bunch of assets banked up, but none of them are in game yet. I, I believe it. Um, it. So out of every faction that you've designed over the years, what, what do you think is your favorite from all mods across? Uh, the Empire of the Hand is always going to be kind of up there for me because it's the first faction, as much as we end up like reworking everything, it's the first faction where we really had to, had the opportunity to have our input on it. Uh, without having to match up to too many fan expectations. With all the custom like, designs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like there's the Clawcraft, but then with a lot of the other factions, with the Empire, then it's like, oh, I get to model a 37th Triangle. Or with the New Republic, like Mon Calamari ships are cool and everything, but there's not as much freedom to be creative with anything. So with the Empire of the Hand ships, uh, even though we've gone through a few iterations of them and some of those iterations have been complete trash, they were my trash, so <laughs> that's always going to be special to me. I gotta admit, as much of a pain as they can be in my in my side when I'm fighting against them, I always have really loved the unique designs that you guys mm -hmm. have really just crafted for the hand. As much as I'm ready to kill them as soon as I start a galactic scenario, I love the way their ships look. They're all very, very good look. Yeah. Their ground has always been a problem. Uh, like, a lot of the ground units are kind of the state they were in almost 10 years ago, like rebalanced a bit here and there, but we've not been able to go through and do the complete reworks that we want to do there. Uh, so it's a lot of just duct tape quick fixes on them. Whereas in space, we are a bit happier with where they sit right now, especially uh, after the last set of reworks where 
their identity as a faction is a bit more worked out where it's long range ships, fast ships, not the most uh, high defense. So their skill floor is probably a bit higher than other factions to play as. Sometimes they'll probably be a bit easier to play against because you can just get in close and brawl with them and they can't stand up to that. But their skill ceiling is also pretty high. So they're a pretty unique faction setup and something we want to kind of get towards with other factions having that kind of unique feel with the government stuff and their own units. So you have like, do you have like government ideas kind of planned for the potential for the um, hand eventually too? Um, Like you got to, you got to dealt with everything. Okay. Yeah. With them, uh, we kind of want to do like a main mechanic for everyone and then have whatever built around that as well. So like the new Republic has the, the elections. They also have like the commander system uh, for the Empire of the Hand, one of their earlier things will probably be some sort of relationship with the Chiss, because the Chiss are going to be a faction themselves as well. So uh, some sort of semi-alliance between the two, though that will depend on uh, how well we're able to use the alliance tags in the game and whether we have to do something similar to the CIS with like the fake AI-based corruption alliances. Because uh, there's a few things we want to do with that kind of thing. Ideally, we'll be able to use the in-game set as allied tags, but there's some problems with that that we need to work out first. Okay. Well, hey, I'm looking forward to any new mechanics, honestly, because with the way that with the fact that we're out, we're still getting updates to this game mm-hmm. um, that are making it probably a lot more of this doable. I, I'm, I'm terrible when it comes to the coding side of everything, um, despite the fact that I spent five and a half years as a coding major in college. Uh, <laughs> um, have like all the new updates and stuff really just been that good for for the uh, for the health of the game? I've heard people tell me tidbits here and there, but you know, I'm I'm, I'm no expert. Like all the they, updates Petroglyph's been delivering. Yeah, for sure. Like the the first updates, I think there's a lot of mods that would have just shut down in 2017 or 2018 without those updates because there was the save issue that was happening at the time where all the mods were getting like 10 weeks into a game, you'd save, you try to load the save, and then you're just done. Uh, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, and you can do some stuff to make it last a bit longer, but it was pretty much killing everything. So a lot of mods would have had to just strip everything out. And unfortunately, the fix there uh, did result in most mods not being able to support GOG in the disc version. Uh, and that's another one that gets a lot of weird criticism towards mods. Like I've seen some pretty, uh, pretty harsh <laughs> comments towards like us or AOTR where it's like, why don't you jerks release a GOG update? Like we, I'd love to, it'd be the we same can. mod if they updated the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I have no control over this and don't harass Petroglyph about it either, but it's not our fault. Yeah, we can. It's not my fault you're running on a 10-year-old version of the game. Just, just buy it on Steam. It's like $5. Like, like. Yeah. <laughs> like, I get not wanting to to spend the f- money on a game you've already bought, but at the same time, like the people making free updates for it are not the people that get mad at for that. Yeah, uh, you can't. It just can't be helped at this point. Yeah. But like, the yeah. last update in particular was like, if I'd been able to just make a list of everything I wanted or could have possibly expected them to do, they got basically everything. So it, if they don't do anything else, I'd still be happy. But if they want to do more, then yes, please do that. So then that means we're going to have another 10 years of modding on our hands pretty much at this rate. Oh, God, I hope not. <laughs> do, you, um, do you want to keep doing this long term, or do you think you're going to stop at some point when you're just kind of tired of everything? Or do you want to answer that question? I hope I'll stop at some point. Like, I enjoy it. And... Like I've made some of my best friends doing this, but I'd li- I'd like to think that I won't be doing it forever. <laughs> but I would I have said the same thing when I like went to university. I was like, I'm done now. But now it's ten years later, more than ten years later. More than ten years? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So let me let me get, let me get this straight. So you were you were you were thirteen. Um, is it wrong for me to try to guess your age or should I just? No, I'm twenty nine. I'm 29. Oh, you're, okay, you're, you're 29, okay. So it would have been like just over 10 years. or Yeah, I think just over 10 years that I started university. Oh, I just I just graduated college almost barely, barely two years ago. I can't even imagine. Wow. I, I still feel old. I'm yeah, going to be 26 this year. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like when I turned 23, that's when every year started to feel like, okay, I, I can stop now. <laughs> every shot that you take at a bar gets a lot heavier for some reason. Well, for, for no just, reason. I never had a hangover before I was like 24 and then immediately 
couldn't drink without. Yeah, man, I I I can't even um I can't even sip like a off of a bottle of wine anymore without getting a little tipsy. I used to just be able to <laughs> when I was like 22, 21, I I was big in the partying um back in the day. I could just go to the club and take like 15 drinks and just be perfectly okay. I wake up the next morning, no headache, no nothing. I could just walk home. Um now, two or three shots and I'm like, "Okay, I'm I'm done for the night. I'm going home." Yeah. It still takes a lot for me to get drunk, but like I the next day I'm just done. Like yeah. I do uh drunk Mario Kart on another channel and the next day I just I can't do anything. It's all a write off, even if I only drink a little bit. So I'm both not drunk and then hungover, which is <laughs> not a feels like kind of a rip off to be honest. <laughs> You put all your effort in getting getting everything set up, drinking and all that, just for it to kind yeah, of backfire. It's expensive. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. It just ruins the next day. <laughs> it's not worth it. Speaking of alcohol, um, for all of my non-alcoholic users out there, shout out to 420. Happy 420 for <laughs> all my non-alcoholic people out there. Um, hopefully you're all having a great day. Um, <laughs> but um, to switch up gears a little bit, um, I've always wanted to ask you this. So how did you and Eckhart's Ladder become friends? Like, where did that relationship kind of start at? Uh, I first met him because, uh, like, he was doing some Sins and Empire at War playthroughs. I think mostly Sins when he was getting into his second channel. Uh, so Sins of the Solar Empire is, like, a kind of similar game uh, that we yep. also make a mod for. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so I, th- I think I first kind of found out about him through that because like he was aware of Thrawn's Revenge and Ascendancy. I think he was playing a bit of those. Uh, and I offered him an early version of whatever version of Thrawn's Revenge we were working on at the time. So he played that and then we just started talking first about like mod stuff, but then uh, just generally talking about other stuff and uh like YouTube and all that. So he started giving me advice on like starting my lore channel because I have a second channel where I just do lore channels kind of or lore videos yeah. kind of like his and that would like he was the one that kind of pushed me to do that. Uh so yeah, it just kind of came out of talking about the mod stuff and then kind of realizing we were in a lot of ways the same person and just became friends through that. Just and kind of like he a was match definitely made in heaven about, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, like we just started with Star Wars stuff and then moved on to other Star Wars stuff. <laughs> well, I love that. I love uh, I love when you can connect with somebody, especially within the Star Wars community, with how difficult people can kind of be sometimes. Mm-hmm. I love when you're able to just connect with people and just kind of build a career kind of out of that yeah. in some fashion. Like he was hugely supportive of uh, both the lore channel and just me doing other stuff generally like he rehosted my first lore video and like my lore channel would not be anywhere without his rehosting of those videos so i got a huge jump start on that but yeah he's he's been great shout out to good guy Eck. we we appreciate the we appreciate your work man we really do yeah. <laughs> but um well cool um i've always also all right so here's here's now here's here's one that um will probably uh knock a few people off their feet outside of thrones revenge what do you think is your favorite mod outside of Thrones? Games? Like, if you could play one mod outside of it, um, drama free and all, who, who, what's your favorite mod out there outside of that one? Uh, I'll, I guess I'll give two here uh, Phoenix Rising and Stargate Pegasus Chronicles. They're That's both unique, like, very different from uh, from Thrones Revenge. There's been some. Uh, some more gap closing between Phoenix Rising and Thrawn's Revenge because Evil Bob the Bob, uh, who's the developer for Phoenix Rising now, is also one of the main devs on on Thrawn's Revenge. But like the research system there, the combat there, all feels really good. Like a lot of the more recent ground combat updates that a lot of mods have seem to take a lot of inspiration from from Phoenix Rising. I do think that Phoenix Rising does have the best ground combat still. Uh, and like the research you can do in that mod, like you can really customize the fleet you're using regardless of which faction you're doing. So there's a lot of unique elements there that you can't really get anywhere else. I and uh, Pegasus Chronicles is probably a bit more obscure. I don't know how many people have played it, but it's one that I definitely recommend. 
people check out because there's a lot of unique features there. The factions are very different from each other. I think there's still just the one Galactic Conquest. It's space only, uh, so it's not super long to play. I think I usually end up finishing it in like two or three hours, but like there's a lot of different story events that happen, a lot of uh, tactical events, like all in a kind of tight package. So I think it's really well made. It's not the most visually impressive mod, uh, but I think what it tries to do, it accomplishes really well. And it's always been up there for me. So those two are probably, if I have to just pick two. Do the developers still work on that? Uh, Because I know exactly which mod you're talking about, but I don't know. Do they? Okay. Uh, Yeah, they do pretty regular updates. Like they have, I think there's like a, a test build and a stable build on the, on the workshop. So they do pretty okay. regular live updates and like, obviously honorable mentions to other mods like AOTR and stuff. But if I'm just picking one or two that I can exclusively play, not including EAWX, then those would be for their like unique angles. That would be what I go for. You know what I think, you know what I think the most underrated, underrated and the greatest mod of probably all time is Yoden mod. <laughs> That's a fever dream. <laughs> in all seriousness, in all seriousness, I feel like um, um, if I had to pick a favorite mod, I, I'm not going to say too many names because I'm, I'm friends with way too many people and I don't want my Discord DMs to be flooded with... Oh, so um, you, you just make me do it. No, that's that's fair. <laughs> just, just a little bit, just, just a little bit, man. But um, in all seriousness, man, if we had to talk about a mod that uh, uh, puts creativity on the board, that's, that's one hell of a mod to do it. There's so many... Um, uh shenanigans <laughs> that you can really yeah. like do with in that particular mod um uh but yeah um me and ek uh recently did uh me ek and charlie uh the other contributor to x gaming channel recently did some skirmish in that we did some last year and this year and it's like probably the funniest streams we've done <laughs> where it's just <laughs> absolute <laughs> chaos <laughs> All the Ray Calamari cruisers and I'm Poe, Poe Dameron. <laughs> I think there's some new update coming out. Charlie spoke to Yoden. So it's it's coming back. So that's exciting. You know, the crazy part is there are people out there who actually take that mod like a uh, serious and like an aggressive kind of fashion. I've met, mm-hmm. I've actually met people that genuinely um, uh, get upset with how the, the balance kind of plays in that mod i'm like mm-hmm. it, it, you have to literally look at that mod for what it is it's just for fun like it, it's yeah. just absolute just pure chaos yeah like i've um, never spoken to yoden as far as i know like everything i've heard is that he's a he's a really nice guy and i don't think he's like setting out to make the most like serious <laughs> hardcore mod like it's it's a lot of fun for what it is i'm poe poe dameron I'm po- <laughs> <laughs> gotta do it right we we gotta get an Easter egg for that and um uh, going to Thrones Revenge at some point or another. <laughs> you just click on a random Starfighter unit, and that's when he screams at the top of his lungs. It, it's like a one in a million chance. <laughs> <laughs> but um, all right, cool. So this is this has all been cool stuff. So I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a few things. I see you've got a guitar in the background. What's your favorite song to play? Uh, I don't have a favorite song to play. I'm not. I don't spend enough time playing or spend as much time playing as I'd like to or should. So most of the time I just learn a bunch of songs, stop playing for a bunch of months, and then forget how to play all of them and have to go and relearn <laughs> stuff. Which always means I have something to do, which is nice. Yeah, but yeah. It, yeah, it's, it's mostly just uh, random stuff that I either find tutorials for or screwing around with in the background. You know, I gotta admit, I'm I'm super envious of the way you kind of got your setup going in the background. Like, all, all I've got right here is a door, a, a laundry basket, and then like you can see my bed ever so slightly. <laughs> but you've got this nice little lighting setup, this really good looking desk. I'm using a folding desk from Walmart that I bought like four years ago. That's structurally in sound. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know how structurally sound these guys are, but the the best thing for desks is just get a countertop from like a hardware store and get some legs. Yeah. Super cheap and can cover a lot of area with them yeah i'm pl- I'm planning on buying up a nice little alex drawer setup with a wooden desk from like ikea or something when i'm, I'm mm-hmm. moving my new apartment is man i've got i've got i've got two rigs that i've got set up i've got a streaming computer and a gaming pc that i've yeah. built accordingly and uh i've got this one on a separate table i got from home depot and this one again on a on a table from 
uh, from Walmart. <laughs> and I recently constructed like this whole four monitor like setup. I've got one on my left, nice. one on my right, and then two in my center. Um, well, oh, when, are we, when are we ever going to get a setup tour now, now that we're here? We can see where all the magic kind of happens. <laughs> uh, I think I did one when I moved, so it it's out there somewhere. But I have rearranged it a little bit since then. Uh, I used to sit like farther back that way. So my desk was just in the middle of the room. Okay. But now I've got all this extra space. Cool. So, I'll, have the, I'll have to look at that video later and I'll kind of study it so I can figure out what I want for my new apartment. <laughs> I, I'm not really happy with the lighting. I've got a, like 30 pot lights down here. Mm. Uh, so it, it's all really harsh in most areas. And I, I got a green screen, but I can't use it at all because the pot lights just highlight one area straight down. So that's gotcha. not very helpful. But up until a few months ago, I was kind of in the same situation as you. I had everything just packed into my room and get up, go two feet, sit down. That's all day. Go back yeah. to the other two feet and sleep that. It's it's rough. Yeah, I used to have a a two bedroom apartment. I actually, share, this is just a one bedroom apartment that I share with my girlfriend. Um, I used to have a two bedroom apartment where I had a home office and I. It was so beautiful. And then I had to leave that place because it became too expensive and she had to move out of town for about a year. Um, only to find out she was going to be moving back probably within seven months of her leaving. So I could have just kept that apartment and had my office. <laughs> That's rough. If you haven't gotten it yet, I miss my office so much. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so it's so much better having like just a different area that you don't sleep in to work in. Exactly. It, it feels less um, stressful, you could say. You know? yeah. like, uh, There's I wake some up sort of escape. Day. Exactly. It's like going into a different world or like you're actually going to work, kind of stepping into yeah. an office. Like when I wake up in my bed, I can literally just look across and I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to do that all day today. Yeah. I don't really have much else to do, you know, with the whole COVID and everything happening. Yeah. You know, and uh, <laughs> somebody, somebody's going to hate me for even bringing this up, but uh, I recently got uh, my 5G shot and now I. I feel like I worship Bill <laughs> Gates a little bit harder, and I think Windows 8 <laughs> is absolutely the best operating system we've ever had. Man, that's uh, a lot more to the vaccines than I thought. <laughs> that's a terrible joke. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I do have a couple other things I wanted to, 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 to comment on, but was there anything that you wanted to ask or just put out there for, for um, viewers, uh, community? Is there anything you want to ask me? Nothing specific, just everyone remember to kill off your heroes in Let's Plays so that you get those interactions. That's how you become famous. Remember that that, that yeah. you're taking it from the man himself. Corey he himself says, kill all your heroes. Instant yeah, YouTube just say player. really inflammatory things about every other mod than the one you're playing. Then say inflammatory things about the mod you are playing. Kill off your heroes, put typos in the title. <laughs> those are my, my YouTube sec steps to success oh and don't forget don't forget your thumbnail put as many arrows as you can in your youtube thumbnail that's yeah you have to be careful success. that it doesn't just turn into a plain red background <laughs> but just anything short of that and keep in mind the resolution so if you're putting them too close together they will just look like a red background you've got to make sure there's enough space between your red arrows that people can tell where the red arrows stop and where the other ones start <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> <clears throat> That's what I learned from Mac. So, Ak, so, does, so does Ak actually do this intentionally just for the memes? Like, he, he slaps an arrow in there like, oh, this is going to be the best arrow that I've ever put in this thumbnail. No, he, he like, he, he'll say, like, I'll stop it when it stops working. <laughs> that, but, but that, that's very fair. You, you can't, you can't yeah. hate somebody for taking advantage of the system. Like, if it works, it works, you know? Like, yeah. Hey. Like, I think he sees it as, like, he does, he's as accurate as you can be is like honest as you can be with the video itself. But when it comes to like the title and the thumbnail, if you're not like lying with it, it's just, a, it's a big arrow. But exactly. We have, so he and I do a podcast and we had star Wars explained on as a guest. So star Wars explained and his wife were watching uh, one of the previous episodes mm -hmm. and, uh, Molly said, "Like, oh, look, he's just clickbaiting with the giant arrow again." But it was, <laughs> it was a picture of an executor that she'd seen. 
So <laughs> at least once he's been accused favorites. of it when it wasn't accurate. Those are my favorite videos when the uh, when the title specifically mentions a ship and the the ship is very visible in the thumbnail. You got a red giant arrow just pointing right to. It. There wasn't even an arrow in that. One. It was just the executor, and she was like, "Oh, this guy with his arrows. He can't help if the ships are trying." <laughs> but there's some nice conditioning there where he's got that as part of his brand. He's got that the red arrow clickbait. Like I said, if, if it works, it works. I mean, I've never personally thought there's um something just absolutely horrible about a little bit of clickbait you know it, it, it gets people kind of invested it gets people a little interested you know like um like like i made a, v- a video recently where i titled it the greatest thrones revenge episode of my let's play so far or something like that and like um it's a little like i i acknowledge in a lot of my videos like hey guys i'm gonna clickbait the hell out of this video but i know you're gonna watch it anyway uh you know you, you know well you can make it kind of joking and kind of fun you yeah. know that, I think if you're not misrepresenting yeah if you're not misrepresenting what's in the video like Sure, it can be a little gaudy that it's like, oh, pointing toward like the arrows or capitals in your titles. But if you're not doing anything that's like a lie with it or misrepresenting what's in the video, <laughs> then that's kind of just what you got to do to survive on YouTube. Like, this is what people click on. That's why people do like the the fake shocked face reactions, because people will see a face in a thumbnail and that's going to be yeah. more like people are trained to recognize faces they're going to do that they're going to look at that first i've seen quite a few of them too the call of duty community is a guy who likes to um uh, and nobody really likes watching call of duty videos on a on an empire war dedicated channel but i I make them anyway um i I see a lot of that kind of stuff that that joke i made earlier about um uh uh, being a war zone youtuber the 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 common Mm -hmm. things you will see are a picture of a gun somebody with a shock face usually like a big time streamer or something um, and the gun will have all the stats like displayed on screen and all the stats are yeah. maxed out damage, accuracy, recoil. And there's like an oversaturated camel that somebody just slaps onto the gun. And, and like I said, I, I, I've, I've thought about going in that direction when it comes to making certain thumbnails, but I just can't bring myself to do it. Not, not yet. Anyway, I haven't achieved that level of fame, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually something I wanted to ask you. Uh, I've noticed a bunch of the, the esports shirts is Call of Duty or esports of of choice oh. or like 100 thieves i think i've seen an eg one before yeah so um i've actually got a lot of different esports shirts so um i recently just i actually just got this in the mail today that's what it took me i got this um, 100 thieves apparel is like it's uh it's scarce i got this at 1 55 p.m literally five minutes before we started this 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 uh podcast i'm gonna call it a podcast it's, it's a damn podcast <laughs> um i got this literally in the mail and i was like okay i'm gonna go get this shirt so i can specifically wear for this video because i like it um i have this one i have a long sleeve i have three of their hoodies and i'm actually wearing a pair of their sweatpants right now oh you know what Ugh, we got a we got a dog tag too why why not nice 100 thieves dog tag yeah i'm a i'm a big fan of 100 thieves but i haven't made that obvious already they're one of the organizations i've always wanted to uh, potentially be a part of for content or streaming or whatever at some point in the future which which is going to be weird um say that ever does happen I, i've always thought about that because uh you know i, I make a lot of empire war videos but it's, it's kind of weird to think how would i integrate myself into a uh, a company if i were to ever get the opportunity that does a lot with other games and more like irl stuff and you know mm-hmm. i've always thought about how could i integrate my life what i do now into that but i also have to think about the fact that i probably won't be doing empire war at the entirety of my life with yeah. youtube you, you just never know um, yeah, but um, yeah, I've got I've got a lot of merch from them. I've got um, two shirts from a team called Envy Team Envy. Um, I have a shirt from um, an organization called Splice, but they don't exist anymore. Um, I got I have a lot of I've actually have a lot of esports apparel. Nice. I'm super um I'm super into that stuff. I've actually gone to uh two Call of Duty World Championships in uh, 2019 and 2018. Uh, nice. I took a cost a cross country flight to California to go watch people play Call of Duty on stage, and was it worth it? Kind of, because my team, 100 Thieves, got second place. <laughs> Is that um, where Nade Shot started? Like, I only really know 100 Thieves and Nade Shot through, like, League of Legends, because that's what I would always play and ended up watching. But is that is that where Nade Shot? Nade Shot? Call of Duty? Yeah, Nate Shaw started with Call of Duty in like 2010, I think, when he was a part of like um, the bigger brands like Optic Gaming and right. all that stuff. He started with that, and then he retired in like 2014. He launched 100 Thieves in 2015, I think, when Black Ops 3 first came out that year. Um, mm-hmm. 
he started with 100 Thieves then, and then um, ever since then, he's just been building up. And well, holy hell, if you want to talk success stories, man, <laughs> like, that guy went from working at McDonald's to owning one of the most uh, renowned esports orgs in the world. Like, that's... I look up, I gotta admit, I do look up to Nate Shot for, for a lot of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, yeah he, he started with that. He started with Call of Duty. He owned a, he briefly owned a Call of Duty team and then he stopped and he bought a franchise in League of Legends. I think yeah. with, um, with Dan Gilbert and like the Cle- like Cleveland Cavaliers and stuff. Um, and then from then on, it just skyrocketed, really. Yeah, because that was one of the orgs, like when uh, the North American League of Legends. LCS thing when they did franchising, Hundred Thieves was one of the teams that actually came in and wasn't uh, yeah. immediately trashed like the other ones were that came in that year. Yeah, because what did we get? Uh, the, like, uh, Golden was, Guardians were not very good and never really Fly had been. Quest, Fly I Quest. Think. Um, yeah, what was like, the other I think that was, um, Clutch Gaming. Clutch Gaming. Clutch. I think Optic came in at the same time, or like Optic's been in and out, but there were a bunch that kind of came in, couldn't hold their spot, like ended up having to sell their spot. But 100 Thieves came in. I think they won the first split they were in, and they've always been, like, top five since then, so... And you know what? Another one was um, Echo Fox. Echo Fox actually went yeah. out of business, though, I think. Yeah, there was... Uh, there was a lot of drama like, with... Uh, yeah, with Rick with Fox him. was, like, super into everything and super invested, but then a bunch of drama happened, and, like, he had some really gross crap happen to him. Yeah. That kind I, of forced him out. I remember, I think it was a lot of, like, ra- I'm not going to get into the, to the yeah, details of it, yeah. but it was, like, a lot of, like, racial stuff or whatever. Ridiculous. Because he's such a nice guy to to, yeah. to, to have to go through all of that. Like, it, it, when you get somebody from, like, the, the, the physical sports world that that's, that's that invested into esports, yeah. gaming. He was like, such a good inv- in, uh, ambassador for esports, and he just got shut out. Like, you were never going to get someone as good for esports as him. Exactly. They just, I'll never understand people's yeah. motivations for running them out. Like... <laughs> Yeah, I, I hope I want to see him bounce back so badly because I feel like he has so much, you know, he has so much interest, he has so much power, he has so much that he can really bring to the to the um, to the esports scene. Whether it's like CS:GO, Call of Duty, uh, Call of Duty actually, if you don't if you don't know, they do franchising now. Actually, they do um, city based franchising. They've got like the Seattle Surge and uh, yeah, Los that's kind of like what Rose. Overwatch does too. I think. Yeah, that's because they're both owned by Activision. Good old, right. uh, good old Activision. I don't, I don't like Activision, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, man, it's it's just a shame when you get somebody so invested into what a lot of people are really trying to make big and you know love. It's like why why would you treat them like trash? You know, yeah. Uh, but but I think it's, that's a mutual consensus with Rick Fox. People love him even in the esports community. It's just his own company did him dirty. Yeah, which kind of sucks. Yeah, I, I'll never understand that. Yeah, just some people just like to watch the world burn, and it's yeah. unfortunate that those people are in power from time to time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, what what what's another what's another topic? Um, so all right, so now now that we're on the topic of like esports and sports, um, if you had to pick like your favorite team across esports and physical sports, like what's your favorite sport? Maybe like what's your favorite um team within that sport? Uh, I've never been super into sports. Like I played ball hockey and stuff as a kid because I'm Canadian and that's required. Uh, but <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> like it wasn't until I got into watching esports with League of Legends that I was like, oh, I kind of I get what people are interested in when they watch sports now. It's like watching the competition, watching the players, like seeing people just be that good at something. Right. Uh, right. So. I got in kind of, I was a fan of Cloud9 when they got into um, the LCS, so that original lineup, <laughs> and now, like, G2 was kind of filling the same niche for me of, like, the five players who were really good, but kind of had their own style, and were able to become, like, some of the best in the world just through non-conventional means from uh, regions that traditionally aren't as strong. So, like, you have all the Chinese and Korean teams, which were always really good the infrastructure was so much better than more <laughs> it's community. insane how much yeah. better those those regions are <laughs> yeah and then like in league europe started coming up and it's like no it's really just g2 is that good or yeah. north america had a few good results through cloud nine so it was those were the teams that i was mostly a fan of at the time 
You know, it's crazy you mentioned Cloud9. I don't know how I forgot about Cloud9. I literally have like 10 or 11 pieces of their merch yeah. just, just hanging in my closet right now. Um, the biggest interaction I've ever actually had with G2 was on Twitter with uh, their owner, uh, G2 Carlos. Carlos, um, yeah. I asked his opinion on how, uh, um, you know, doing whatever you want in life. He, his literal words um, were to just not give a shit and just do it. Just don't let anybody stop you. <laughs> And just just keep working, just keep working at it. You know, don't don't worry about other people. Great guy. They did some really great guy. Some super weird stream with it was it was just him in a hot tub last week. I, <laughs> I'm not sure what they were doing with that. Like there was the whole the whole storyline of G2 were the the villains of Europe or whatever because they were kind of boring when they were initially forming as a team because they had like a super weak bottom side and they'd play a boring way. Then they'd win. They'd go off to international competitions. And just get absolutely trashed on. And everyone was pissed at them for that. But now they're people have come around on them. It's funny you mentioned the um the hot tub thing. That's because uh I'm pretty certain I'm pretty certain Carlos is memeing on the hot tub meta that's really taking over Twitch right now. I don't know if you've heard about that. Okay. The, the hot no. tub meta where um in in most cases now for, for the record, I'm gonna say this for the people that are watching. I'm not trashing whatever people want to do with their lives. If you want to do that shit and it makes you money, like, like go for it. But um, yeah, Twitch has really developed this interesting um, hot tub meta with, uh, you know, where it usually requires little to no clothing. You just sit in a hot tub and if you're hot, you make money. So that's the gist of it, pretty much. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, my job is playing Empire at War. Uh, and Come on, dude, man. We gotta, so it's like, what's the difference, really? We gotta get you in a hot tub at least with like a pair of like Star Destroyer or like swim trunks or something. Uh, like. uh, <laughs> I'm not on board with that. <laughs> not, okay, if people yeah, want to okay. give me a hot tub, I will take the hot tub, but I'm not filming myself in it in any way. Yeah, some not people... Um, like I said, some people take advantage of the system and make money off it, and hey, more power to you, you know? I, yeah. I, I couldn't do it, but... It, it, yeah, like whatever people want to do. I was just very confused when they put that video and I had no idea what it was referencing. It's like <laughs> Yep, no, they're just metagame and they're sticking to they're sticking to what's popular on Twitch and it's uh Yeah. I love G2. <laughs> <laughs> they're such a great org. Um <laughs> Well man, I mean, we've been here for almost an hour. Um are there any other topics that you think uh, that you would personally like to cover while we're here? Do you want to talk a little bit more about um the future of you with like empire war or do you think you kind of like kind of put that all out there uh oh, if there's anything else you want to ask i'm still game but uh there's nothing in particular i i want to bring up oh you know what are those board games on the back shelf back there uh yes the What's your favorite bottom board area game? through there uh my girlfriend and i play a lot of like carcassonne and uh splendor so a lot of those kind of euro games Okay. We haven't been able to play Carcassonne since we moved because there's just no space for it. We bought like every expansion, and there's like six trillion tiles when you do that. I was gonna ask how uh, big is the how big is the game? <laughs> yeah, it's, once you get into all the expansions, it's just you need such a huge space, and none of our surfaces are the right size for it. Her apartment used to be mostly empty and gigantic, so we just play it on the floor. Yeah, but. Now we don't have any open spaces that are big enough. Like maybe right behind me, but <laughs> just got to plop it on the floor again. <laughs> like wood floors, is, it's not comfortable. Take board games take way too much space. Yeah, hey, you know what? You know what? Um, I think the great uh, one of the greatest games I would love to probably see you play. Um, potentially intoxicated Monopoly. I want to. I want to see you, <laughs> Ek. Um, who else can we get on there? Um, Nomada Firefox. Oh Yodin, <laughs> all of you intoxicated playing Monopoly. That's the dream team right there. No, you don't. You don't play Monopoly. You <laughs> inflict psychological torture with cardboard and thimbles. <laughs> that's the game where you go to make enemies. <laughs> no, that's just Empire War modding. Why would why would you True. add in Monopoly? True. That, that okay. Yeah, you got you got a good point. <laughs> like oh, you don't you don't need the Monopoly for that. It's bad enough already. <laughs> That is true. That's true. We can't settle our differences. We can't settle our differences now. There's no way in hell Monopoly will ever fix any of them. <laughs> but yeah, Unless someone gonna... gets shot, then it's <laughs> there's no more problem. 
I gotta say, man, it's been it's been great having you here. Like, it's been great to really get to know more about you and um, just kind of where you really came up with everything. Because, like I said, I was super ignorant to a lot of it. I've heard a lot about you, but I've never I like, directly spoken to you. I think aside from when you helped me with like a bug or something with Thrones Revenge like a year or something ago. But, um, you know, like I said, it's been great having you, dude. And um, I don't really have too much else I could think of asking. There are probably a ton of people out there that want to have like Thrones Revenge related questions, like when you're updating this, when's the next release? But you know what? All of the people that are gonna watch this, you can just wait. You're gonna wait like the rest of us and be patient. Uh, April twenty eighth and May fourth, actually. Okay, never mind. He he said it. <laughs> yeah, there you May- go. May the fourth makes sense though. That, that makes yeah, sense. April twenty eighth for Father Republic. Planning on May fourth for Thrones Revenge. Those are I the, can't wait to play with that new UI. Dates. Actually, the new UI yeah, you guys I'm have created. I'm really excited it's, about that. It's so crisp. I gotta say. Yeah, but Sheen did a great job. Yeah, on that. we yeah. went through like so many iterations. So much like there was seven or eight different styles that we went through before deciding on it. But I'm I'm really happy with it. It'll take some getting used to. There will definitely be some comments like, "Oh, you you broke it, change it back." But if people give it a chance. I I loved it. I I hope everyone else will love it. Um, can you repeat the, like like the last like five seconds? There was like a loud beeping that just came in a Discord out Sorry. of nowhere. Uh, yeah, like, I'm I'm sure there'll be uh a bunch of people saying like, oh, why is this different? You changed it. You screwed it up. Go back. But like, if you give it a chance, like I <laughs> once I got used to it, I loved it so much. It helps bring everything together. So give it a chance, and I think people will really love it. I I, th- I think it looks phenomenal. I can immediately tell the inspiration kind of felt like a Star Wars: The Republic kind of, yeah, like yeah. just from the look of it. We called it the uh, the tour version when we were designing because there was like <laughs> like a CNC version, tour version, uh, a few other layouts based on different things, but we stuck with tour. It looks great, man! I can't wait to play with it whenever when, when it finally does release. It looks really good. Yeah, thank you, and thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, not a problem, man. Um, hopefully we can do this again in the future once um, sure. you know, you've finished working on newer projects. And um, I want to, I want to, I want to. I used to do these kind of modders lounge style. That's what I initially called the podcast, modders lounge, because I felt it was most fitting, really. Um, you know, I've done one with uh, Strobe, Jero, and I've done one with a uh, Farseer. Um, I'm hoping to get some more people on these, you know, just where we can kind of casually talk about things and just. Mm-hmm have fun like this because frankly at this point we're all getting older you know and i think at this point it's more entertaining so we'll all to be you. dead and there'll be nothing to remember us all by <laughs> i got you yeah exactly you know we're, we're gonna be dead soon uh but yeah i mean you know i want to I, I always like these videos kind of being like a bit of drama free you know you know because i know mm-hmm. we've all had our grievances here and there um but we're all getting older at this point i feel like at this point we should all just strive to have as much fun as we can with all of this um, so I'm hoping to get more people on these kind of things and um, yeah but again I'm glad for season 2 of Modders Lounge you're the very first person I got to talk to for. Oh, such an honor. Thank you very much. Not a problem man and do um, you have any final closing remarks or anything? Uh, no just I want to highlight again Red Arrows. Red Arrows <laughs> and, and suck at the game be terrible at Empire yeah, War. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> well all right, we're going to end it here, everybody. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And as always, I will see you in whatever video I make next, whether it be Empire War podcast. Uh, I, got, I got a vlogging camera coming. We're going to make vlogs soon. Um, yeah, hopefully you all have a great day. May the force be with you all. Peace. That, that's my outro right there. <laughs>